Much of the drama and what may turn out to be the final determinant of the Florida State uh, battle in court with the ACC uh, comes down to who makes it to the finish line is my best understanding, whether that's in North Carolina court or in Florida court. We got Tony Syracuse here from Last Word on College Football to help us sort out the latest. Tony, let me read from the David Hale article briefly, and then I'll turn it over to you. So a Mecklenburg County judge on Thursday denied two motions by Florida State to dismiss or stay a lawsuit filed by the ACC that the league hopes will force the school to honor its grant of rights agreement, pay the conference more than $500 million if it hopes to exit for another conference before 2036. So the ruling by Judge Lewis Bledsoe III is seen as a significant win for the ACC, as it would likely mean the battle between the league and Florida State would proceed in North Carolina rather than Florida, where FSU filed its own lawsuit against the conference. Yeah, I think that that is. I don't. I, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna paint a cautionary tale about overreacting to Judge Bledsoe's ruling today. And that is that this was not unanticipated. Um, we were in court for the entire hearing, three and a half hours long, uh, about two weeks ago. And when you see the presentation from both sides, and, and first of all, let's, let's take a step back. There are no surprises in court. This isn't Perry Mason, you know, where someone's going to jump up and admit to doing something wrong. Both sides submitted their motions, submitted their briefs, submitted what is called a, um, a, a, the ability uh, uh, for the court to act and how they want them to act. Memorandum of, of um, oh, I'm losing my brain here now, points and authorities. There you go. Memorandum of points and authorities, which is the roadmap for that side. They're telling the judge, here's why you can rule on our behalf. Um, this was the verbal presentation of those sides with some augmentation. Judge Bledsoe was very active during the hearings. Each side got one hour to present their side. And then there was another hour to deal with other issues that included ESPN. Um, he asked a lot of questions. He had a lot of interjections. So it was very, very interactive from Judge Bledsoe. Um, but I would caution as to sourcing also. Let's remember that ESPN is a co-litigant in this. Um, so as the reporters write it, their bosses are joining the ACC in the lawsuit. Um, this was not monumental in any way. The crux of it is this. This was a turf war. It is a turf war as to who has jurisdiction over these lawsuits. There is the ACC versus Florida State in Mecklenburg County, North Carolina. There is Florida State versus the ACC in Leon County, Florida. The first hearing in that is this coming Tuesday. Um, this ruling does not impact the Leon County trial at all. As a matter of fact, these are almost mirror images of each other. Florida State was looking to get the case dismissed from Mecklenburg County. They did not succeed. That is today's ruling. On Tuesday, the ACC will be trying to get the Florida State case dismissed from Leon County, saying it belongs in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, that will be weeks in the making. We now have a new lawsuit with Clemson suing in Pickens County, South Carolina, and, uh, and the ACC filing a countersuit in Charlotte, North Carolina. So we've got a lot of moving chess pieces. Well, what Judge Bledsoe ruled today was there will be, he, de he denied the motion to dismiss. That's, that's the bottom line of that. Um, he said, this is the proper jurisdiction in the here and now. And there were a lot of claims from Florida State about sovereign immunity uh, as a university and under Florida State law. And that's why it belonged down there. And uh, Judge Bledsoe in his 71 page ruling said sovereign immunity does not apply here. The ACC had talked about being a uh, unincorporated, not-for-profit uh, entity in the state, and therefore it was 
allowed to follow its bylaws the way it wanted to without purview from the court. That's uh, not entirely true, but it did lead a little bit to the ruling we saw today. Part of what happened with Judge Bledsoe's ruling is he did dismiss one of the ACC's claims against Florida State, which was a that they had violated their fiduciary responsibility to the conference and to the other conference members by filing a lawsuit and by costing everybody money because these lawyers are going to be expensive. Um, I will tell you when we were in court for the initial hearing, our count between the ACC, Florida State and ESPN was 16 attorneys uh, among, among the three litigants. So this is, and we're talking about guys who were, uh, who were justices on the Florida State Supreme Court. Uh, we're talking about a lot of high powered attorneys. So this is going to be expensive as this goes on. The judge dismissed that. He said, nowhere in the ACC Constitution or its bylaws does it say that Florida State cannot bring litigation to address grievances that it has with the conference. Um, you know, I always try to come to your show prepared and, you know, we got props. We actually have a copy of the ACC Constitution now. We have a copy of the bylaws. We have read through the several hundred pages to try and get a better understanding and be prepared for these lawsuits. Um, we have a copy of every one of the filings from every one of the litigants, both in Charlotte and in Leon County. So, uh, and in Pickens County now. So, you know, we try to come to your show prepared. We always appreciate that, Tony. And uh, I'm sure even if you weren't prepared, you would uh, bring uh, much light to what uh, transpired today and what uh, we've seen over the last several months and we'll see probably going forward, which is the motion that you discussed about that's going to be heard uh, next week mm -hmm. in Florida. So is there any reason to believe that it won't be ruled exactly the same to say, yes, we need uh, to I think it will be. And therefore yeah, I, it's I, get thrown out. Yeah, I think it will be. And, and they're going to invoke um, much of the same arguments. Both sides will um, just kind of the reverse of what they did in Charlotte. And we have every reason to believe that, that, you know, the point will, will wind up the exact same. Some of the arguments Look here, and there there are still matters to be resolved in Charlotte, because the ACC and ESPN filed motions to have much of the discovery and the evidence sealed, because ESPN was claiming that it would harm their their practices of how they go about their negotiations and how those things get done. Because Florida State is going to bring internal memos about the contracts and the grant of rights. Remember, this is all about Florida State wanting out of the ACC and needing a release from the grant of rights, which go to 2036. Um, and they have some credible evidence on their side. ESPN wants that sealed. They say it's about private contractual conversations between them and the ACC and it's up to the ACC to deal with the conferences, but the conferences allegedly, uh, the schools rather, have been kept in the dark about some of this, if you believe Florida State. Um, the judge had not ruled on any of that after the original hearing. The point being, if he had ruled to dismiss this case, everything else was moot. So there was no point in addressing those. Now we will expect at some point in the next week or two, to get rulings on whether some of this content will be sealed. The irony, I guess we'll call it that, to me I find it humor more than irony, is that a lot of what ESPN and the ACC want sealed is already wide open in the Leon County case because Florida State just threw it all out there in, in their motions to the court. Um, so it's a little like trying to close the barn door after the horses are already out. And actually, the ACC was asked um, a couple of weeks ago in Charlotte, why aren't you down in Leon County asking for this stuff to be sealed also? 
And their rationale was, well, if we pick and choose what we want sealed in Leon County after it's all been out, people will know what's true and what isn't, <laughs> which is a very, it's a very unusual defense. I have to tell you, this, this lawsuit, at least in Charlotte, has a lot of things that are really throwing mud at the wall and seeing what sticks. For instance, Florida State has a claim that the 2016 revision on the grant of rights is not valid because the school president signed it and he was not authorized to sign it. It had to be someone from the board of trustees. Well, to bring that up eight years after he signed it is pretty disingenuous. And even Judge Bledsoe had a little bit of a chuckle when one of the ACC attorneys said, that's swell, but you haven't minded taking hundreds of millions of dollars from the conference over that eight-year period based on his signature. So that doesn't really fly, and it really very much doesn't. Um, the ACC and ESPN have claimed that Florida State leaked a lot of information. The grant of rights is supposed to be secret. It's supposed to be under lock and key in the ACC headquarters in Charlotte. Uh, you know, because I've shown them to you on air. I've had a copy since I've had a copy for two years, pretty much since right after I moved to Charlotte, I was able to get a copy. Um, if you know how to file Freedom of Information Act paperwork, um, if you have the right contacts in the right schools, not that hard to get, frankly. So they're blaming Florida State for unveiling things that should not be open to the public. Um, it's a little late for that, frankly. I mean, to, to, to say, this is leaked and there needs to be penalties and we need to seal this stuff is kind of silly when, you know, reporters like me, we've had it for a long time. Like I said, got a copy of the ACC constitution right there. Not that hard to get if you know the right people who will work with you. Tony, the legal term that you're alluding to that ESPN is claiming it's escaping me right now, basically dealing with industry practices mm -hmm. that they're trying to protect. I, I can't think of the term right now, but what I find funny about that and certainly correct me if I'm wrong, because every other situation case that I have been privy to, and I just mean from a distance that usually deals with things like patents and technical mm -hmm. procedures mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the secret formula at Coke, you know, th those sorts of things, not, not how you negotiate, you know, th these right. are, is this secretive and under lock and key and a ESPN specialty that they're the only ones who deal with, with television contracts or such things as they do that they can keep that under lock and key. I'm laughing that you brought up the, the secret formula to Coke because Judge Bledsoe brought that up in <laughs> discussing uh, ESPN's claims also, that there are secrets and then there are just general ideas of, you know, how to make soda. <laughs> and, that's, and, and you start from there and that's good enough. Look, the idea that and, and ESPN's attorneys brought up the fact Fox could see the internal machinations and the workings. Do you think Fox doesn't already know how to do this? Fox has the second biggest deal in the country with the Big Ten. Do how many really... of those people have worked at each other's networks <laughs> anyway? <laughs> exactly. And, 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 and in the claim that the ACC made that Florida State has leaked a lot of this stuff to the media, there were, I think by my count, three members of the media in court uh, covering the hearing, ourselves included. And as, as Florida State brought up, if you think that the media is not getting their information from inside sources within ESPN and within the ACC or from the schools themselves, you're kidding yourself. There, there's you know, the idea that you think that your negotiations between ESPN and the ACC were so unique to the entire broadcast industry that it needs to be sealed is silly. The ACC was kind of pushed into a corner to admit that out of the, I think it was a 140 page contract between ESPN and the ACC, they only submitted 13 pages into discovery to the court. Their rationale was 
that we're trying not to take up the court's time with stuff that isn't relevant to the specifics of the motions. Florida State, of course, <laughs> it's discovery. We get to decide what is what is germane to our arguments, and you're hiding stuff from us that we may want just because you think it should be sealed. That's not up to you. I don't think based on what I'm hearing, I will be surprised if the judge gives wide scope on sealing things. I think they may seal a few things that really could be construed as internal conference documents. Um, but things like sealing the grant of rights would be absurd. We all have a copy, <laughs> you know, um, sealing the ACC bylaws and things like that would, would be silly. The ACC is being attacked for violating its own bylaws with some of its motions. For instance, the bylaws require that in order to file litigation against one of the members of the ACC, you must have a vote of the ACC membership with two-thirds approval. The ACC now has to acknowledge they didn't hold that vote before filing the lawsuit. They were in such a hurry to file the lawsuit to get to court first to try and maintain that jurisdictional control. They did not hold a vote. They had to admit they held the vote about six or seven weeks later when they filed the amended complaint, the additional complaint. And they said that was good enough because the original complaint was in there also. What kind of escaped everybody is that means they got the two thirds vote. Let's pause on the lawsuits for a second and put into motion that 10 schools in the ACC approved a lawsuit against one of their own. I mean, when you, it's, it's, I, I started jotting down who it would be, who were the 10 who would approve it. It wasn't too hard to come up with the list. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about the ones that have the least amount of leverage Correct. if something happens to the conference. And the most amount to lose if something happens to the conference. Wake Forest, Georgia Tech, um, Boston College, Syracuse, Virginia Tech, you know, on Louisville, on and on and on. It wasn't that hard to come up with, with the 10. But 10 schools approved a lawsuit against one of their own, which is... And they're going to have to do the same thing with, with, with Clemson as well. So there's a lot of playing loose with the rules and the regulations. And it's going to be about how much weight Judge Bledsoe puts on each one of those. Now we go into a college football season. And of course, we're focused on football, but there are mm -hmm. athletics going on all the time. We're in the spring semester right now. So we have mm -hmm. a conference, the ACC. And unless you can determine another time in history that is this much at odds with now two of its members schools they're going to have to cooperate they're going to mm -hmm. and it's two most important football member schools right. carry right. on through this next football season so that doesn't make uh you know it brings back memories of al davis and pete rosell you know exchanging super bowl trophies in front of a uh a, a worldwide audience so it's, it's not it's, the best of situations it's really not. And and when you look at, you know, imagine if you will, because these lawsuits are going to take a while. The judicial process in this country does not move rapidly for anything or anybody. Um, and this is being held in a special court in, in Mecklenburg County. It's a civil lawsuit. So it's a civil court, but it is a particular court to complex contract litigation. In other words, you can have contracts, but a judge can look through it as pretty simple. This is this is complicated. This is convoluted. And so it goes to a special court. And Judge Bledsoe is seen as a, a specialty judge uh, in these kinds of matters. But imagine then going forward, let's imagine Florida State wins the conference and Jim Phillips standing there, you know, giving them the conference championship trophy. It's those kinds of things that that are that are relatively amusing. Part of what happened with this is the rush to court. There is the ACC filed this suit before Florida State had even announced they were going to try and leave. They filed this suit two days before the Board of Trustees at Florida State even had their lawsuit. And it is because of what's called a first to file. 
judges will often maintain if you are the first to file you get to determine the jurisdiction the problem with the acc filing and this has not been addressed yet it's somewhere else on the judge's slate is the acc filed a two and a half page placeholder about when they when they knew the vote from the board of trustees was upcoming and that what the vote was going to be and then six weeks later they filed their 181 page motion which was their actual lawsuit so there's like i said there's a little bit of playing loose with all of this i will say this and i'm going to tell you i bring this to you it's the first time that first time that we have brought it up publicly i have spoken in the spring to administrators i won't put their positions on it because it would tell who i'm talking to administrators in athletic departments at four different acc universities there is not a lot of faith in jim phillips in being able to hold the acc together one of them actually said we all wish we had a brett yormark type commissioner who knows how to circle the wagons and knows how to be forceful and we don't have that um so there's a little bit of a side story that goes with all of this and that there's not a lot of faith in Jim Phillips being able to get out the duct tape and, you know, keep it all together. North University of North Carolina is watching what happens. You know, there's a lot of anticipation that they could be next in line. Um, there is, and that, and that brings another interesting part to it which you know we're talking now five six seven eight chess moves down on the board what happens if you lose these schools what happens if you lose a north carolina school i will tell you one of the things that has been glossed over is you must you have to call either east carolina or app state to join the conference you absolutely have to because we actually read at last word on college football because we're nerds we actually read all the summary pages from the state of North Carolina 2022-23 fiscal year budget. If you'll remember, the ACC moved its headquarters from Greensboro to Charlotte. The taxpayers of the state of North Carolina, it turns out, paid for that. $15 million was given from the state budget to the ACC to do that because they were worried they could go somewhere else. Maybe they'd leave for Virginia or go to some other state so the taxpayers funded that move with that there is what is called a clawback clause and it lasts for four years that clawback clause says you must maintain at all times four universities from the state of north carolina in your conference or you owe us the 15 million dollars back now 15 million dollars when we're talking about hundreds of millions and all these lawsuits may not seem like a lot but it dictates what Jim Phillips must do if he loses one of the North Carolina schools. He's having the state of North Carolina dictate his moves to him. Tony Syracuse, the last word on college football. Tony, because going to court and going the distance mm -hmm. would be, uh, you know, very costly to both sides. Mm -hmm. looking at Florida State and the ACC. And of course, there's a Clemson aspect here with the ACC. So the ACC fighting two fronts at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because of that, because of what would be discovered mm -hmm. uh, that has yet to be discovered about ESPN's dealings, the ACC's dealings, because of those things factored in and because of maybe the ACC determining the inevitability that Florida State and Clemson are going to take off regardless, uh, what is the likelihood that this is going to be settled out of court? I think you have to look at two parts to it. One, I think it would be incredibly damaging to the ACC to settle because one, once you've settled with Florida State, there's the blueprint for Clemson and for North Carolina and for Virginia and for whomever else is going to depart. You've given them the blueprint of here's your steps to follow. Now, that having been said, there is a way to a settlement, but the amount of money that has to be garnered by the ACC has to be so large that it makes it prohibitive for other schools to try and take those steps. 
I'm figuring a ballpark figure of 300, 350 million for the school to get out, plus the exit fee, which is about 120 million exit fee. Um, that's one of the parts of the Clemson lawsuit saying that's, you know, it's, it's completely irrational. It's twice as big as the exit fee for the big 10 and the sec. Um, but it would have to be so large that it scares off the other schools from even attempting this. So the grand total would be in the $450 million plus range. That's the only way the ACC can do this. Otherwise they've got to see it through they absolutely have to see it through or they're giving everybody else the directions on how to get out. Tony, you alluded to Clemson's uh, latest action mm -hmm. and their first dip into the pool publicly for all of us to see. And for as vocal as Florida State's been and out in front of this, the Clemson verbiage was a little more entertaining. They were extremely harsh in their... <laughs> Uh, depictions of the ACC's dealings. And you brought up one of the terms, but there were several that caused me to chuckle in them being as, as uh, just confrontational as they were. Confrontational is a great way to put it. They were very accusatory in, in everything that they put. And if you boil it down to the net net, their lawsuit is similar to Florida State's. We want out. You are you have been untruthful in your dealings. Look, one of the big allegations that came from Florida State and is going to be dug into as soon as everybody can get to discovery, <clears throat> excuse me, is this extension that was signed in 2016. It extended the grant of rights from 2027 to 2036. The schools are locked in. The wording is precise. It is exact that it is for the purposes of extending the ESPN contract. There are now allegations from Florida State and Clemson that ESPN never extended that contract. That what they did was a year-to-year -year unilateral option. In other words, ESPN didn't say, yeah, we're in for another nine years. ESPN said for that nine years, we have a year-to-year -year option to renew. And that option is completely on our side. But yet the schools, and that, and that verbiage, those terms are nowhere in the grant of rights and not covered in there at all. So there are allegations that this was done on purpose to hold the ACC together while ESPN can leave in 2028, but there's a grant of rights that the conference still owns the rights for the schools for another seven, eight, nine years. Um, and if that is proven, that's uh, that's really damaging to the conference and to the grant of rights. So Clemson has thrown that out there, as did Florida State couched a lot of theirs in a lot of legal flowery terminology. Clemson was just, frankly, more, more brutal. And, you know, you could sit there as someone who has never read a legal brief and look at it and say, wow, they're pretty, they're pretty pissed off about this. They have been, as you point out, they've been a lot quieter publicly. They've let Florida State bang their heads against the wall and see how it goes. They they've let Florida State, you know, play Don Quixote tilting at windmills while they're kind of sitting back going, all right, you're you're gonna bulldoze the door for us and we're gonna quietly walk in. But then they're filing was it, it it really didn't hold anything back um it is very accusatory it is very angry um and so now frankly with those two doing what they've done you're going to sit back and see if north carolina joins the group and what they do i wouldn't expect them to do it right away but i'll be surprised if by summer north carolina hasn't filed something Join Tony at uh, lastwordoncollegefootball.com. You see it right there. You see Tony's X handle as well. Uh, of course, spring practice in full swing across the nation. Join Tony and the rest of the staff there. The transfer portal will be opening once again here in just about a week. <laughs> so we've got oh, that as well. It's exhausting. We, we've got our writers very proud of them. We've, we've got guys all over and gals all over the country. 
uh, covering spring practice and the personnel. We actually have new coverage this year of the University of Washington. Uh, we've got a reporter who literally now has a house five minutes off campus. So you want to talk about, you know, easy accessibility. And he was there covering Pro Day and he's been there at spring camp. So that has been terrific. But yeah, in the midst of all this, hey, transfer portal on the 15th for two weeks, you know, here, here we go again. So never a dull moment. Tony, thank you so much for stopping by. Always appreciate uh, your expertise and uh, you breaking things down for us. Always glad to do it, my friend. Be well.